So let's do this random Hulk book that you guys don't really have much context for, but everybody else does, and it'll be what? fun. I don't know. I, Why? No, Why does everyone you know else have context? Because every, every because every comic book fan knows Hulk number 180 and 181. Oh. That's right. Yeah. Why? First appearance of Wolverine. Oh. Oh. Yep. Okay. Well, we're gonna, shit. We're going to introduce you to the world of Wolf. No. <laughs> we're going to introduce you the same way the world was introduced to Wolverine. In a Hulk book. Oh, I was assuming a National cool. Geographic special. No. <laughs> that would suck. Because then it's about real Wolverines, which are way less exciting than the Wolverine. I don't know anything about real Wolverines. They're not like wolves, which, of course, Wolverine like acts like. Mm. Yeah. They're small and fierce like Wolverine. Well, he is small and fierce. Yeah. yeah. That's the only connection. That's, That's it. it. Yeah. That's it. Oh, they're also made of adamantium. Are they like, That's true. They're made are they of like weevil, uh, weasels? Yeah. Yeah, they're or are they more, more like, like dogs? I think like they're more like ferrets. Like they're more like I a know. rodent. I than thought they, they were kind of like a badger. Hmm. Wow, like a, a smaller badger. badger. Yeah, but either way, that ain't a wolf. Right. Written by Len Wein with art by Herb Trimp. How far into Hulk is this? You said This is 180 and 181. It starts with 180. Years. Yeah. Many years. Yeah, this is 1974 when we introduce you to Wolverine. Hulk is doing Hulk shit. He's an idiot. <laughs> he wants to be left alone. He's being dogged by the government. Mm. Generals want to blow him up. General Ross. General Ross. Yep. Yeah. There's also another one, uh, Colonel Talbot. Oh. Oh. Multiple generals. Yes. And Talbot is fucking Betty Ross. Mm. Because she's like, I'm done. I'm so done she with Hulk. Broke um, up with Hulk. It, it didn't slash work banner. out. Yeah. Okay. So that's done, and huh. she's with she's with Talbot right now. Interesting, it's, but it's, Talbot's trying to kill the Hulk. Well, Talbot's just involved. Like, ah, he is a colonel. I see. Ross is a general. Right. He has to listen to him, and the priority oh, is I killing think. Hulk okay. all the time. Right. Uh, I'm, I, you know, I know, I'm, I'm sure that Talbot has a vested interest in seeing the Hulk die, given that, of course, his current girlfriend used to be with the Hulk. <laughs> right, and he's just so petty. I or mean, jealous, or insecure. Uh, every villain in the Hulk book is. <laughs> But we're going to introduce a couple of fun aspects to the Hulk mythos okay. that uh, you may be quite familiar with, mm. uh, including the Wendigo. Hey! Yay. Wendigo. I didn't yeah. know that was Hulk thing. Okay. Yeah, a, it is a Hulk I thing. I like the fact that Wendigo and Wolverine are going to be in the same book. Yeah. Right? Was Wolverine what? a mutant at this point? Or yes. Did, oh, okay. Yeah, oh, no. Len Wein is sure to put a lot of who Wolverine needs to be in his debut. And in less than a calendar year... Giant size X Men would debut, which also features Wolverine, right. adding to the roster, and it would be written coincidentally by Len Wein. So okay. clearly, Wein has a vested interest in getting this Wolverine character going. The scuttlebutt was that Canada was buying a lot of Marvel comics, <laughs> and they were like, "Well, then we better give these Canadians a superhero." And so but they're they, already buying them. They're like, "Yeah, but like they'll they'll." <laughs> Okay. Are you kidding me? They'll sell like maple syrup cakes. That's right. <laughs> Which isn't a thing. Hulk at this point is just jumping around the Marvel Universe, getting into adventures. I could see why the Incredible Hulk series on TV modeled this concept where they were like, so he goes from town to town, uh, he gets into some scrapes, he runs into a character or two. He turns into the Hulk, he smashes, he leaves. Right. I'm like, yeah, yeah that's every can... comic book. Len Wein, I think, I remember him talking about like lamenting that he could only really come up with about 46 issues worth of stories. And I'm like, that's that's a lot. That's not bad. That's not bad. It's more than I can come up with. Exactly. For the I Hulk? Mean, that's like episodes of, uh, of a show. Quantum Leap. Ex yeah. So Hulk is jumping around. He wants to be left alone. He is up in upstate New York, mm -hmm. coincidentally near the border of Canada, because Canada will be integrally involved in this whole thing. Right. And he lands. He's literally jumping. Yeah. Oh, no. He always jumps. That's, yeah. that's Hulk's like bread and so, butter. Yeah. Is just bouncing all over the place. Right. Or I might even say he's leaping. He is. He's, yeah. he's leaping tall buildings or stretches of land in a single bound. And at the uh, termination point of one of his jumps, he lands on a man's fence. And I love this interaction <laughs> because he lands on this guy's fence and the guy... Oh, sorry. Yeah, and he's... No, he's... No. no well, he's... yeah, Hulk is like, oh, geez. And it's great because Hulk is completely reasonable in this interaction. Hulk is not the brainless monster in this oh. interaction. Instead, it is a northern New Yorkian hick who has never heard of the Hulk before. What? And he is so pissed that the Hulk broke his $600 fence, and he's going to take it out of the Hulk's ass. 
Wait a minute. I'm sorry, did he break the whole fence as far as it goes? Because there's no way one section costs the whole fence. It's $600. Well, I don't know. It's a pretty good fence, you know, pretty... (laughs) There is no way that this man didn't make that. Today it would be in that in that day and age that that does seem pretty steep. Also, for a section of fence. Agreed. This is horses we're talking about. Well, it it does fence in the horses. Exactly. This is a a stable, a corral, even. It's true. So, this dude is so pissed. I love how angry he is. But he's like, "Did you see what that gorilla did my fence?" And then he proceeds to itemize exactly how much the fence is valued at, and he yells at the Hulk. That's like if I like burnt, like broke a dish in your house, and you're like, "That cost me three hundred dollars." That's what the entire set is worth. Exactly. Well, you've broken the set. I need to replace the entire set now. Mm-hmm. I mean, look, fences, from my knowledge, are very expensive. They are shockingly expensive. Uh, uh, so yes. I'm on the side of the rancher here. This that is, is upsetting. This yes. is a post. Uh, and like three Look, boards. The horses run off, which is more of an inconvenience. Oh, but this guy, no I love he takes his hat off and he throws it on the ground and he says, what are you gonna do about it? And the <laughs> Hulk is like, I, I, I'll Hulk, kill you. No, he Hulk goes, well, I, Hulk, sorry, he broke your fence. I, Hulk could help fit. Wait a minute. What am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> and he just pushes him out of the way, and he leaves. And he caves the man's chest in. He, he just That's pushes amazing. him out of the way. But it's so great, because I love like Hulk being reasonable for a minute, and then remembering, and then, wait a minute, I'm, oh, the, I'm fucking the Hulk. Hulk. Yeah, I don't need to be reasonable. I'm not helping you fix your fence, you Bill asshole. Bill me, asshole. Exactly. <laughs> I don't understand the guy not knowing who Hulk is, and not being surprised by a giant green monster falling from the sky. He's, he's just, just He doesn't miss a beat. No, he's so blinded with rage. <laughs> Just treats him like a man, yeah, like well, a man who he somehow keeps smashed calling him his a fence. gorilla, <laughs> and I'm like, that ain't no gorilla, pal. You talk to it like it's a person. Let's say it was a gorilla. <laughs> would your conversation make any sense? Would it? I say it's going a lot better than it would be if you were actually interacting with a real gorilla, as they are not capable of speech or reason. That's not true. I seen McGilla Gorilla on TV, and he talks all the time. A goddamn cartoon, you hat wearing idiot. <laughs> And he is like kind of chased he keeps onto sleeping. the yeah, and he ends up on like kind of the border between New York and Canada. Has he ever killed somebody by landing on them? I've never seen the Hulk just be like, he wham, on kabloom, those horses, like Gallagher, like, being like, oops. He clearly couldn't control landing on that fence. He's. I'm saying logically it should have happened because he can't speaking, fly, he, right? No. He's just on a he's just on a ballistic trajectory. Oh yeah. Like, he just lands wherever he was gonna land. That's true. I know. Typically, when when the Hulk does that, he is going usually towards unpopulated areas. Mm, okay, so you it's know, the, less likely he would land on something. Yeah, I think this this fence was in a pretty remote location. Right. So while Hulk is bouncing around between America and Canada, a special base built to deal with Hulk sightings in Canada what gets a blip that Hulk is on their radar. Now I feel like if you're going to build an entire facility that is dedicated to locating or monitoring when the Hulk appears in your space, you're gonna get a lot of Hulk sightings. Maybe a lot of false positives. Mm. Because that's all you're looking for. That's a flock of geese. Nope, it's the Hulk again. Said ballistics. Like, I, I don't think so. In any case, I, I assume this is a reference to the Hulk is like a nuclear bomb, well, and we have early warning stations around the I world wish, that I are wish tracking it were that. nuclear launches and no, so forth. No, this is Hulk went to Canada like 20 issues ago, and they never forgot it, and so they built this station <laughs> to deal with it if he ever showed back up again. Right. It's not like uh, how Wolverine got his adamantium, where there's like an underground base or something. I mean, there is that, but like this is. No, was this that is, based in Canada? Yes, it was. Yeah. That's okay. The, yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. That, that was Canadian, yeah. whatever, Special Forces Special Forces, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so is it using some sort of detector for gamma radiation? Uh, seemingly, I, I think that what they're like using- How are they is, detecting? Really, what they're doing is they're just using radar. Oh. And they just see that like- Something's bouncing Something around. is bouncing around and it's gotta be the Hulk. Okay. And it, look, it, it could is. be anything. Well, yeah. it's not, it is Hulk. And <laughs> it is I Hulk should thing. point out that Hulk does that 20 issues ago or so in the first appearance of Wendigo in a Marvel comic. Ah. So it's inexorably connected to Canadian Oh, okay, mythology. so like maybe that happened. They're like, what the hell is the signature? And now they're like, we have to watch out for the Hulk. That's right. Because when Hulk shows up, also there was a Wendigo spiritually created cannibalistic white demons right. appear as well. So it, right. let's he brings say, them all out of the woodwork, it's a all the crazies yeah. and stuff. Yeah. So, they, <laughs> so they're like, well, we got to deal with this. Mobilize Weapon X. Right off the bat. Oh. Wolverine is called Weapon X, 
and they are mobile. And the Canadian military, really, it's actually the Royal Canadian Air Force. Oh, okay. I was going to say the Royal Mounted Air Force seems <laughs> yeah, like they're flying they're, horses. Yeah, they ride horses. They're Pegasi. Hulk is enjoying his respite. He's walking around. He's enjoying his solitude. He stopped jumping. Stop jumping. Just took a minute for himself. <laughs> he's just enjoying the Canadian wilderness. And he happens upon a pack of ravenous wolves <laughs> who proceed to attack him. Now, maybe this is a harbinger for Wolverine coming because here are some wolves. Could be. Len Wein is a pretty talented writer, so it could be that that's the case. In any case, some insane looking wolves attack the Hulk ah, and, and break their teeth on him. Oh, no. Yeah. no. Uh, it's interesting because they don't break their teeth on him, but Wolverine, the character with adamantium unbreakable claws, can't pierce the Hulk's skin with those claws. Later on, he will because they want him to, but right now, he is bitten by wolves and he smashes them. Like, it's actually kind of a horrific sequence because he's swarmed by wolves and they push him into a ditch and then more wolves come. Oh so my he is just, God. He is literally like an army of wolves. This is Weapon X right here. That's right. It's just <laughs> mobilize the, the ravenous wolves. This is madness. I know. The wolves would never do that. They barely attack human beings. <laughs> the Hulk is clearly dangerous to them. Yes. What if the gamma radiation is setting them off? Oh, They're maybe. sensitive to it. Yeah, it's like a high-pitched frequency. All right, fair enough. Or like the smell of him. But yeah, but yeah. he literally gets dog-piled right here. By dogs. By, by wolves. wolves. Yeah, wolf-piled. So he blasts the hell out of these wolves with like, you know, just, just his fists. Right, they and explode then, out of the ditch. And then they run away. And, and then they like, ran ah. corpses back down <laughs> to the ground. Yeah, because they're fucking yep, dead. Yep, the fur and viscera <laughs> fall on the Canadian countryside. Uh, and now he's like, yeah, you better run. And so they leave and he's like, ah, who, who, Hulk don't need friends. Like Hulk is Hulk's only friend. <laughs> uh, Hulk is obsessed with getting friends. Yeah, right. that should have been a thing where like, no, they're keeping you warm, Hulk. <laughs> <laughs> they can't hurt you anyway. Yeah. Yeah, right, it's just, yeah. What does it matter? It's a little loud, but otherwise, it's really quite comfortable. <laughs> so we see, like, a little, we, we check in with Ross, Talbot, Betty, and what they're all doing, and it's, like, it doesn't matter what's happening. Mm. Talbot was involved in some shit. They want him to take a break. They're like, just take some time off. And he's like, wait, no, but the president is coming, and I want to meet the president. Of course, it's 1974. <laughs> I want to meet Richard Nixon. <laughs> Yeah, okay. He's my president! Yeah. And they're like, all right, dude, we'll work something out. <laughs> so the president's you coming by? I, I yeah, can't miss I this. See. This is the big thing of my life. That's it. There's another guy in this sequence named <laughs> Armbruster, and Armbruster's just like, he's the full metal jacket guy. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's just a hard ass. So Talbot has melted about the president. Ross is like, look, we'll, we'll work something out. You know, maybe I'll get you an autographed picture or something. Like, he's just like, look, Talbot, look, we'll get it. We'll work yeah, it out. Relax. You're fucking my daughter. It's fine. <laughs> and so that is being set in motion. But Armbruster's like, will he get to meet the president, though, Ross? Because he seems a little too insistent on meeting the president. I don't like that. And I'm like, why don't you mind your own fucking business, man? <laughs> That's so funny because that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, why is this guy so <laughs> insistent? I want to be the, the president, president You're so the bad. military. Like, show some, like, discipline. Some decorum. Yeah. So th that plot is dropped. Oh. Good. But the Hulk is wandering the wilderness. Now he's a little sad because the, the wolves attacked him. And he starts hearing <laughs> this, this ethereal voice. You will not be able to guess where the fuck this story goes. So the mm -hmm. Hulk hears this ethereal voice. It's like, Hulk, come to me. And he's like, what? Hulk, hear voice? He, he, Hulk, see nothing. Where, where voice coming from? Well, I, if Hulk can't smash voice, then Hulk will smash trees. So Hulk just like is smashing his way towards the sound of this ethereal voice. And, and then Treebeard's really... like, oh, fuck my legs. <laughs> Fucking, oh god! Yeah, Treebeard is moonlighting <laughs> in the North American wilderness. So Hulk is just smashing trees, heading towards the source of the voice. The voice belongs to a woman who was, I guess, established 20 issues ago in the first Wendigo book, uh. named Marie. Everyone here is Canadian. They all have Canadian slash French names. Oh, French oh Quebecian names. Yeah. Yes, and in fact, uh, they do reference like the Quebecian government, which okay. is wholly separate from Canada, but whatever. So. Marie is doing her thing. What is her thing? Well, she and Georges are, they're, in, they're, in, they're embroiled in some sorcery <laughs> in a cave. What? Because in the previous- She, it, she looks like a little Loki. Yeah. 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 I, I was gonna say she looks like she's from like a Conan comic book. Like nah. she, is, she yeah. is, she's all in on this whole like magic thing. Yeah, Not that horn, she's, like, crown, furs. Exactly, yeah. and it's like, by the way, she's just doing this because this is how she understands what she needs to do in order to accomplish this singular task. And Georgie's like, Which is? if I go along with this, maybe I'll get some. Bingo, that's exactly what this plot is. Yep. 
Yep. Marie. She's crazy and hot. Yes. And, and this guy and wants George to get George wants laid. to fuck Marie. Yeah. Yep. So what happened? Well, about 20 issues ago or whatever, uh, Marie's brother and George and a third much less fortunate gentleman <laughs> were hunting and they got fucked up and they were trapped in a cave by wolves <laughs> and the other guy died and uh, he died. What yeah. does that mean? He was he was mortally wounded and succumbed to his wounds oh, okay. in the cave. And so Marie's brother, who was one of the two survivors, was Georges. Ate him. Ate and becomes the Wendigo. Yes, ate that their, their their traveling companion. All right, so Marie's brother's the Wendigo. Her, her brother's the Wendigo, and she's like, I know my brother's the Wendigo. And he ate this guy to say to survive four days in isolation in a cave. <laughs> he couldn't make it four days without eating the <laughs> guy. <laughs> Not only Weren't that. we also in that cave? I also love the idea that the wolves have been snarling and snapping at them for four fucking days. Well, you understand, <laughs> wolves won't go in caves. Well, and, it's a well-known fact. Not only that, but they also like, they, they attack not only in packs, but also in waves. Where it's like, well, you take the first light. Right. And, then, <laughs> and then the next wave of wolves will come. <laughs> like, eventually all the wolves will leave. Four fucking days? Yeah, so, they're yeah. very persistent. I know. They, instead of eating the guy, right. he should have- Killed a wolf. Th well, thrown his body to the wolves to distract them, and, and then they could escaped. run away. I know. And he then he would have become a Wendigo. Right. But then he wouldn't have been a Wendigo. I mean, no, no, the guy was getting story. better, and he's like, no, but I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> and then he succumbed to his No, he's wounds. not going to make it. He died. He, he was already no, dead. I think I'm going to be okay. No. Nope. No. Nope. Nope. No, you're, you're dead. Dead. Yeah. Uh, You're flatlining. No, he, he ate that guy when he was dead. But uh, so Marie's plan is. This is all a plan to eat somebody. I mean. <laughs> I, just just like, I, I, I have to, I have to so figure it out how we taste. eat someone. I've read the issue. <laughs> it's it's almost like it didn't even happen. Like they talk about it afterwards. Yeah. You know, like after the fact, because they're like, not going to wow, show it in children's up. comic oh, book. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, a man consuming a human flesh. Right. Look, it's, it's a man eat man world out there. Yeah. So Marie is like, okay, sorcery caused my brother to become a Wendigo, and Georges, it's kind of your fault anyway, because you're neither dead nor a Wendigo. Because <laughs> uh, Georges, <laughs> it's kind of your fault. You were in charge of supplies for the Literally, trip. I remember reading this and being like. Marie's really hard on George. I'm gonna look this up. And I read the other issue and I'm like, this ain't George's fault. Right. You're just, just an asshole. He just made it. Yeah. <laughs> he just didn't eat dead men. So yep. it's survi instead of survivor's guilt, it's survivor's blame. Yes, that's yes. right, that's right. But, so, but she was she there as well? Or no. no. Oh, wow. No, 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 no. She just finds out about it after the fact. I see. My brother's a Wendigo now. I see. And Hulk had to fight that Wendigo, and that's horseshit. Oh, I thought all four of them were in that cave. No. Nope, it's just the three men. Oh. So she doesn't really know what happened. She's like, probably you could have stopped it. Yes. Okay. Also, George wants to bang Marie. So he's like right. conflicted. He is he is so her Renfield, but also he keeps complaining and be and begging her to knock it off. Right. Like every time she's like, okay, okay. So the idea here is yeah, well, uh, how do you how do you solve a problem like Wendigo? Do, what do you punch the spirit out of it? Nope, you just use sorcery and so the other Plus the, the Hulk? Yeah. How could the Hulk help at all? How indeed? Well, since the Hulk is a monster, not everybody knows about the fact that, like the duality of the Hulk, the fact that Hulk has an alter ego. Right. So they were just like, there's this green monster that's just roaming the countryside that nobody likes. So we're going to ensorcel the Hulk bring him to my cave, and it turns out you can't just like, you can't kill a Wendigo, they can't die. And you can't cure a Wendigo because you can't make him not have eaten a person. <laughs> but what you can do is you can transfer the curse, which I think is horseshit. That is horseshit because the guy still ate a person. I know, but it's all it's all magic and magic has rules. Whoa, whoa, whoa this is thinner. I, I, I believe this. Right. No, I can transfer my curse to somebody else. Exactly, right, so, because okay. magic is petty, Marie's plan is we're going to capture the Hulk, we're going to lure my brother the Wendigo here, mm -hmm. and then we're going to transfer his curse to the Hulk. Hulk will become Wendigo, and who cares? Everyone wants to kill him anyway. And yeah, but you can't. You're just making an unkillable thing more monstrous. Yes, that's right. Yeah. But Marie doesn't care about that because she's an asshole. Is so the fact why that wouldn't she just transfer it to George? <laughs> right. Well, well, because, because she kind of wants to bang him too. I, uh, it never once, once her brother is cured, and then she then can forgive we can get back to him for you know failing yeah. to save him. Exactly. 
is is the fact that he's the Hulk important, or is no. it more like he's just a guy who no one will miss? Yes, that. But there, there's got to be an easier person we'll get a who homeless no one person. will miss. Yeah, no, or a criminal, right. a murderer, yeah, something, no, or a don't. bunny rabbit. No, you, you can't. It's got to be one to one. It's got to be a human being. <sighs> right. Damn so it. that's the plan. Whoa. And in that's, the cave, that's a terrible plan. I know I it say. sucks. It's one of the worst plans I've ever heard. <laughs> so in the cave, they have like two monolithic slabs in the form of beds mm -hmm. we're gonna like so so uh, yeah they, they have to get them on the beds yep. and they transfer the uh -huh. oh, and no. lightning has to strike them or something <laughs> right, exactly. so they have to get a wendigo yes and the hulk yep. on two beds yes so thankfully marie has a, a plan for really this. convincing bedtime story yeah. no marie has had done her research uh -huh. such that she has I'm sure so she's used i mean obviously well, I mean, she's, she's apparently calling the hulk yeah, she's from already miles able away. to send like telepathic signals to the hulk right so she's Use already really good at this but yeah. she she ends up bringing the Hulk, luring him to the cave. And he's like, oh, Jesus. Hulk shows up and he's like, oh, Jesus, people. You guys are jerks. No one's, and she's like, no, we're your friends. And he's like, oh, okay, oh, all right, friends. Yeah, I could use one of those. <sighs> so she offers to feed him and she does and he just hangs out and eats. And because she's wearing furs, he calls her animal girl <laughs> uh, because he calls everyone something. So while Hulk is just stuffing his face mm -hmm. with whatever mass that is that she's <laughs> sure that he's eating. Uh, it's KFC. Uh, yeah. Uh, Marie is bringing over a bowl of broth, but it's actually like knockout juice that's right. gonna like keep him under. Georges is like, oh my God, this is so sad. Look at him, he believes in us. Like he's our friend and stuff, and we're just gonna, we're just gonna make him the wedding. She's like, shut the fuck up. Jesus, George, shut the fuck up for me. You wanna get some of this, you better shut up. <laughs> yeah, Fall in right. line. She doesn't even do that. She's not no, like, No, hey. it's implied though. It, heavily. Well, George's whole, whole thing is like, yes, I owe you a debt, but do I? Like, she's like, you owe me. Because what? you let my brother become a Wendigo. And he's like, I You do. should have known he'd become the Wendigo. Right. He's like, didn't your parents also let him become a Wendigo by giving birth to him? <laughs> right. Blame them. Like, uh. We're both equally as culpable. But uh, <laughs> she's like, no. So he's like, no, like, do I owe you a debt? Like, he is willing to let her think that he owes her a debt. Right. But really, he's, he's in love with her. Yeah. And he's like, I'm just doing this because I want to bang you. So they knock out the Hulk with the vapors of this broth. And so he's on the slab. And then Marie just like goes full tilt sorceress. Like she's got Wait, a Wait, the vapors of this thing will knock out the Hulk, but they're fine. Yes. Well, they have it right uh, in his face and everything. It, it must be magic, right? Yeah. It can't be regular I'm, chemicals because that wouldn't hurt him. Right? They, no, no, it's, it's magic chemicals. Yeah, okay. But uh, so she goes full sorceress. She's got like a bubbling cauldron and she's <laughs> doing an old crazy language that she learned from like God knows what. It's never really implied or explained, <laughs> but it does lure the Wendigo. That's this, the other thing, is we gotta bring the Wendigo down. This right. also sounds like maybe she caused the Wendigo. No, no. With her sorcery. No, she's just so motivated. No, she's she like, probably wasn't even a sorcerer before She the wasn't, Wendigo. she's she, a regular. That, that's what caused her to become a, sor a yeah. sorceress. Well, and she's barely. She's become a, like an A-level sorcerer <laughs> who can knock out the Hulk and call the Wendigo in 20 issues. Yeah. Yes. 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 What, is there like time. a Canadian night school for this? <laughs> I'm assuming that there's some kind uh, of a I'm sorcery school. I'm sure there's school. a later issue of some kind. I, I don't recall it. Marie no. ever really coming up again, but like the point is, so Marie lures the Wendigo, but while Wendigo's on his way, he's taking a sweet ass time, mm. the Hulk wakes up because the Hulk has a crazy awesome metabolism. Mm. So Hulk wakes up and he's like, oh shit, Hulk is awake. Uh, maybe a Hulk will find Animal Girl and she'll give him more food. Mm -hmm. So he goes looking for them and while he is looking for them in this deep, crazy cave that has like rooms and shelves <laughs> and breads. George and Marie are arguing about the morality of this plan, but then the Wendigo shows up and they're like, all right. When the Wendigo shows up, there's an editor's note that says, Wendy, Marie, and George all first appeared back in issue 162, Hulkophile. Bet you thought that we'd never get around to telling you that. And I'm like, thank you. All right, uh, I 162, got it. I could have used that information when these characters were introduced as if I should know who they Why are. Why did you do it now? Yeah. We're halfway in. If I'm not invested in Marie and Georges, <laughs> going back and finding issue 162 is not gonna make that work better. No, they're like, no. whoa, no one cares about Marie and Georges, but here's the Wendigo. Here's the Wendigo. Hey. Okay, you're probably wondering at this point. What the deal is with the Wendigo. What the fuck is going on there? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. I love that they were like, Debating it, and the when it goes here, right? It's like, like well, oh, well, he's here now. He's here now. He's, he's here now. No, I, I know he's here. It's, it's over. We have to just. He's here. <laughs> it's too late. We can't. We can't. We gotta sit, sit down and wait. We'll cross the threshold. <laughs> so the Wendigo comes in, and Hulk is like, "Oh shit, the Wendigo's there." 
because he fought the Wendigo right. and it won the season. He knows about the Wendigo. In 162. Wendigo. Yeah. So he comes out. He just like appears. Like Hulk just hops out. He's like, hey, Wendigo, what are you doing with my friends? I'm going to fucking kick your ass. <laughs> and George is like, ah, oh, shit. Your, your magic potion wore off of the Hulk. You're not some sorcerer after all. You're an idiot. And she's like, wait, Hulk, no. Wendigo's our friend. And he's like, okay. So Hulk offers. Hulk literally he gives him an ultimatum. He says, get away from here or Hulk will smash you. Marie then begs Hulk to wait a second. To which Hulk jumps on the Wendigo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> he's the Hulk. But Hulk also says, Hulk warned you. And I'm like, okay, you, no. You, you barely. You better get out of the sketch, I'm gonna punch you. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I <not>. warned you. <laughs> the, everyone has a hair trigger in this book. So Hulk attacks Wendigo. It starts to bring down the cave. And so we get an awesome Hulk Wendigo fight. Oh. Where the they Hulk, bring the cave down? Awesome? It, the, the Hulk does not collapse. But large boulders do fall so it's from st the roof. Starting to it's come starting apart. to collapse. Yeah. It, the collapsing does not matter. All I'm pointing out is the fact that large boulders fall from the sky right. that are going to crush Georges and Marie, so they can't just wait in the cave. Right. But we do need to return to the cave later, and all that stuff is unmolested. So don't worry about that. So Hulk <laughs> and Wendigo exactly fight. Two boulders that are going to fall directly on them, and everything else is fine. <laughs> That's right. So Hulk and Wendigo <laughs> fight, and they have a great knockdown, drag out fight, which. George and Marie watch from a bush, and it's a great moment where Hulk, and I love this moment where Wendigo just grabs a tree and he just kabonks the Hulk with it. Nice. But then Hulk picks up all the trees that the Wendigo could use, and the two of them have like a sequence where they bonk each other. It's just, it's it's madness. Meanwhile, Treebeard is just like, uh, why am I even What bothered? is up with Treebeard? He, <laughs> it's not even from this universe, Different man. franchise. No, they're using trees. <laughs> so? <laughs> you mentioned trees. Yeah. So Hulk you brought this up. So Hulk and Wendigo <laughs> fight, uh, apparently. Yeah. I like that I like that Hulk sees the Wendigo and fights him, and therefore we don't have to figure out, or the writer didn't have to figure out what the fuck they were gonna do to get the Wendigo to like drink the potion. Yeah, no. Because yeah, no. <laughs> I'm like, what was your plan? Yeah. Okay, the Wendigo's I, here now. I think Marie the Hulk you can reason with, kind of. I know. The Wendigo? Yeah, no. Well, well, but the Wendigo is technically Marie's brother and George's friend. Uh, yeah, so maybe. maybe there's some aspect of it. The, like, I believe yeah. there's a piece of him in there. Yeah, by the way, yeah. in and the like, comics. He'll, re he'll remember or yeah. like, you know, Scent has a memory or something. Right, yeah, but yeah. in the comics, they do establish that he does not. <laughs> well, but she doesn't maybe know that. She doesn't know so that because she's an idiot. maybe she thought that it would work, but yeah. in reality, had the Hulk not intervened, the Wendigo would have just fucking killed her. Absolutely. Everyone yeah. knows that the way to a Wendigo is through its stomach. She's going to offer him more, <laughs> more food. food. Yeah. yeah. Well, if it worked with Hulk, it should work with Wendigo. Right. So well, Hulk, the Wendigo would just kill her and take the food as well, though. That's true, yeah. But <laughs> Wendigo did not also attack them immediately, so maybe there's something yeah, to it. Yeah. I think uh, also that the yeah, Wendigo was Yeah, because he was deciding form. how to oh, attack yeah. them. You have to understand, the Wendigo is a terrible, ferocious beast who deserves the evil that it got. It ain't a man! <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's the thing. That's what they say. Like, after issue 162, they're like, no, like, he is no longer a man. Like, he yeah. is a beast. He is a Wendigo, though. Yeah. So they he fight. He is the Pokemon called Wendigo who says his own name. He yeah. does love to say his own name. So they fight, and then Wolverine shows up. Yay! And he's like, hey, I'm going to stab you. Like, I'm also in the book. I love it. Wolverine literally just shows up. He says, all right, you freaks, <laughs> knock it off. And they're, they're both Wendigo and Hulk are like, Rrr! and then Wolverine shows up in all his glory and goes, if you really want to tangle with somebody, then why don't you try your luck against the Wolverine? <laughs> and, <laughs> and thus history was born. Yeah. Boom. Wolverine. And by the way, like, claws, yellow suit, blue boots, belt buckle. We got it all, baby. Yeah. It's it's Wolverine. The mask could use some work. Uh, it's horrible. You mean his little cat whiskers? Yep, I hate it, and most of us do. Obviously, they change it. Yeah, but and the Kate, rest of it's the same. Yes, like yeah, virtually that's... no changes. One note. <laughs> Mask. How flexible Losing. are you on the mask? <laughs> also, it looks like his claws are coming out of his wrists. That's because they do. Originally, the claws were attached to the gloves. Uh, they didn't come out of his body. They were right. just weapons that Weapon X used. Right. Those are his signature blades. Oh, my claw. Yeah. yeah. Literally, that's the idea. That's why his claws are popped throughout his entire appearance. Right. He put on his claw gloves. Right. But again, they don't say that. Yeah, we just, so like, we just, right, we just assume it. it. Yeah, so. Boom. Yep. Oh no, his claws came out of his arms the whole time. Oh yeah. I, actually, they're bones. <laughs> and they right. encircle the bones they're bo with <laughs> They're metal. bones wrapped in metal. Yeah, yeah they're too. bones. It's a curse actually, he had as a child. Actually, yeah. yeah. So Wolverine jumps into the fray to two completely baffled <laughs> 
monsters. He looks like a yellow panther. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They yeah. clearly want to make him look a little more like a wolverine, mm -hmm. I guess. Oh, yeah. Well, because he jumps around, and he's like, he's small, but he's fierce. He's like, and, and, and Hulk Rawr. calls him a rabbit, and he goes, nah, try a wolverine. Right. I'm like, yeah, you said that. Yeah, you said issue. you were called the Wolverine. Yeah, I know. You're trying to make it stick. I get it. Nah, yeah. but you're fighting the Wolverine now. <laughs> oh my God, do you have a learning With disability? The ferocity the of a on? Wolverine. I get it. No, I, all right. <laughs> Wolverine attacks Hulk, and this is Wolverine. Like, he's short. Yeah. He's fierce. He has no patience. <laughs> yeah, and he attacks with his claws. Like this is Wolverine. This is Wolverine yeah. for the next thirty years. So, right. and he's just like he's just like run at him, stab, yep. keep running. Yep. Run back, stab, keep running. He's, like just and he jumps around. Yeah. He's too fast for the Hulk, but yeah. he's. So he's, he's death by a thousand cuts. That's right. Yeah. So he's trying to kill Hulk, thanks to the Canadian government who sent him to do this. Right. And his claws can't pierce the Hulk's hide. Right. So he's like, all right, I can't stab the Hulk, but I could kill this Wendigo. Right. So he immediately starts I'll attacking. I'll just kill this other thing and say that I did the job. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's not going to welch on the Hulk deal, but there's two monsters. Yeah. I'll kill the Wendigo first since I can't stab the Hulk Yeah, yet. I'll figure out that Hulk thing later. Yes. Well, right. I gotta kill somebody. Right. Yeah. So he goes in and he attacks the Wendigo, and so the two of them have their fight. And Hulk's like, what the fuck? Like, we were just fighting. <laughs> and then you just, just stopped. You just went and attacked this, this the Wendigo. Does that mean we're friends? Oh, I guess me what? and the Wolverine are friends. So then Hulk jumps in and attacks the Wendigo. And both Wolverine and, te and Hulk team up to fight the Wendigo now. That is kind of advanced thinking. Yeah. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. That's literally what the Hulk says. There you go. Oh, which is an old expression, right. but Hulk happens upon it by accident. <laughs> and so they fight. And while they're fighting, Hulk is like, yeah, friend, let's fight Wendigo. So we got Wolverine and Hulk teaming up to fight the Wendigo. And they're having a grand old time. And they're like trading quips and agreeing with each other. You know, Hulk's calling him his friend. Wolverine's letting him think that they're friends. <laughs> I and love this duplicitous nature of Wolverine. <laughs> yeah, Wolverine's an asshole. Oh yeah, totally. Right? Oh yeah. So then they fight Tug the Wendigo. Ass. Wolverine jumps on Wendigo's head. Hulk grabs the Wendigo. Wolverine jumps off, and then Hulk just throws Wendigo through like three trees. And then when <laughs> Wendigo lands on the ground, Wolverine's like, "Okay." And then he pounces on Wendigo and stabs him in the chest with his adamantium claws, which he does identify. He's like, "These claws oh, are made of okay. diamond tough adamantium, the strongest metal known." Like it's just like, okay. Holy so shit. introduced in this book, yeah. adamantium. Yeah, like. All right. Well, I think adamantium had been introduced already in uh, the Marvel universe, okay. but like. Len Wein's put it out. Yeah. Wolverine, yellow suit, mutant. He calls himself a mutant. Okay. That's in there. Canadian and adamantium claws. And murderer. Also, vicious murderer, no patience. This is Wolverine to a T. Yeah. So they stab him, and what the narrator explains is the Wendigo can't be killed, so what would be a killing blow actually just knocks him unconscious. I and see. so Hulk basically observes that. He's like, the Wendigo should be dead, but he's not. He's in a Wendigo healing coma. I can see with my Hulk eyes that he is not dead. That he's breathing. Oh, okay. So Wolverine and Hulk just stand there for a second because they just teamed up. And right. Hulk thinks Wolverine is their friend. Right, now it's a Marvel team up. Yeah, right. They fought for a little bit, then they and teamed now up. Now they're friends. But they, they literally they stand there for a second, and then Wolverine goes, Yeah! <laughs> Like, all right, now it's your turn. And Hulk yeah, is like, but it didn't work. Right, right, no. And Hulk's like, a two brutality? Like, how dare you? We're, 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 we're friends. Why did you do this? What? You little asshole. Well, I'm going to smash you. So while Wolverine and Hulk fight, Marie and Georges, remember uh, those major yeah, characters? Yeah, we're going to get back to this fucking They plot. take this as an opportunity. And so they grab the unconscious body of the Wendigo and they drag his ass back to the cave. Right. And they're like, well, that's that one. That Wendigo is like 500 pounds. <laughs> yeah. And Marie brought some more of that vapor broth. Right. And so she's going to keep the Wendigo under. Right. And because the Wendigo isn't as strong as Hulk, it should actually keep him under for the amount of time they need. Right. So, Wendigo. So they're halfway there. They're halfway there, baby. <laughs> All so, right. Uh, while that's happening, the uh, Royal Canadian Air Force notices that Weapon X is not killing the Hulk yet. Mm -hmm. And so they're coming up with Plan B. And Plan B is like a crazy, ornate. What they call a helicopter, but it's not. It's like a fucking it's a spaceship. <laughs> but uh, they're like, that's the plan. Weapon X asked for like six hours. We're going to give it to him by gum because he gets results. Yeah, we don't right. want to kill him but, too. Right. But, but if he doesn't get plan. results, 
we're gonna send. We this. do have this. Well, they're not gonna drop we're a bomb. We're gonna bomb they're, him. No, no, okay. no, no. They're oh. gonna go in and they're gonna they're gonna get results themselves. What does that mean? We'll find out in the next issue. So Hulk and Wolverine. They're gonna fight. give Wolverine a talking to and be like, "You really gotta double down." <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to do this, but they, like, you're just not living up to your potential. Yeah. Marie then goes on to a very high point. And she like times her magic spell just right so that when she casts her spell, it knocks out both Hulk and Wolverine. So they're unconscious. Wait, she could do that? Oh yeah, apparently. Why can't you just send the curse in now? Why was that the original plan? I don't know. Well, because I think she thought it was gonna be easy. Right. I mean, all I need to do is bring him. She to thought the she cave. was gonna reason with the Hulk. I she, think she didn't really know what the Hulk is. You right, know, she's just like, get true. over here. Right. So she's like, okay, I've used my spell of subjugation. They're knocked out. And now let's go make the Hulk into the Wendigo. Right. But the Hulk then starts changing and he transforms back into Bruce Banner, which uh -huh. most people don't know about. So when George sees that the Hulk already has his own Wendigo-esque curse, mm. he's like, all right, I was barely on board <laughs> when we were going to ensnare a gullible monster. But now we know that this monster is actually a guy. Yeah. And this guy has his own shit going on. <laughs> I will help you no longer. This is not fair. And she's like, but you owe me a debt. And he's like, all right, you know, maybe I did, but I've, pl I've, I've paid it, okay? I've been dabbling in dark arts. God <laughs> knows what we needed to do to get to this point. And I'm, but I'm not, I'm drawing the line on fucking around with transferring cannibalistic curses to already doomed monsters. Fuck you. And Doesn't so he, he have enough to deal with? Yeah. yeah, so he leaves. Just leave him alone. Yes. Leave Hulk alone. <laughs> I want that now. Yeah. <laughs> I want you in that meme. Yeah. <laughs> leave Hulk alone. <laughs> so, so George leaves, and he is just like crestfallen. He's like, oh man, I'm in love with Marie. I still want to help her, but I'm not going to compromise my morality. Right. I know what I have to do. You still want to help her. Yeah, yeah. Well, I want to help her out all right, out of those furs. <laughs> so he cries, and then he goes back into the cave, takes one last look at the sun, and then goes into it. So No. Mar yeah. So Marie, you got to be kidding so, me. So Marie chains up Wolverine, and then she goes to get... Bruce Banner and make him into a Wendigo. But while she's pulling on his arm, he transforms into the Hulk. And Hulk's like, huh, Hulk thought Animal Girl was his friend, but it turns out Animal Girl's like everybody else just wants to use the Hulk. You're an asshole. Yeah. And, and he breaks like, her in half. Right, yeah. No, he's just like, he just fuck like you. just like smashes. <laughs> That'd be amazing. So Hulk's pissed at Marie, and Marie like runs away, leaving a chained up Wolverine and the Hulk. Hulk sees Wolverine chained up and he's like, you also pretend to be my friend, but you're just an, an asshole liar like everybody else. And Wolverine's like, yeah, well give me two seconds and I'll break through these chains and then we can fight some more. <laughs> and I was like, oh no you don't. I'm not gonna give you any That's time. That's two seconds, Snicked. Yeah, <laughs> no he does it. He picks him up and he throws him on the ground. But the impact of hitting in the ground causes the chains to weaken a little more. So Wolverine breaks free and then attacks the Hulk. More Hulk Wolverine fighting. Uh. So while that happens, Marie runs to the cave to try and, I guess, pull out another trick up her sleeve. Right. She, she just doesn't know where else to go. No. I guess I'll go to the cave. Right. That's my base operation. Ruined, so yeah. she goes into the cave, and when she gets there, the Wendigo's there. And she's like, oh no! And she screams because the Wendigo's like, ah, I'm gonna get you. And so she screams, which stops the Hulk and Wolverine in their tracks. So Wolverine is distracted. Oh, they're both good guys. Yeah, well, no, because Wolverine <laughs> notices. And the Hulk was already rearing up to give Wolverine a killing punch. Mm. But when he notices that Wolverine turns his head, he kind of tries to move a little bit. And so he just basically knocks Wolverine unconscious with a blow that would like cave in a mountain. Just like you would knock Wolverine's head clean off. Or right. at the very least make it go into a 360 degree circle. <laughs> Either way, he, he cold cocks Wolverine while Wolverine is reacting to the screams of a woman in peril. That's amazing. And then, so Hulk's like, nice try, little man. Nah, I gotcha. Like, I'm the best. <laughs> Way to go. Marie's in the cave. Uh. She's dealing with the Wendigo, but the Wendigo isn't trying to kill her. The Wendigo's trying to communicate, but it's a Wendigo. It can only say Wendigo. <laughs> Wendigo. Uh, so she's just like, what do you Wendigo! mean? Wendigo. Right. Wendigo, <laughs> Wendigo, Wendigo. Oh, 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 oh. oh Wendigo. Uh, Wendigo. <laughs> two uh, words. Wendigo. It sounds like. Wendigo. Uh, Second two syllable? Two part words. Uh, two so <laughs> Wendigo. Wendigo. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm out. I don't think this is going to work. I don't think there's any way to do this. So the Wendigo, like, he, he basically makes her stop for a second. She sees that he's trying to communicate with her. 
She's like, Paul, what is going on? Paul's her brother. Right. And so uh, the Wendigo points to the like the rock beds. Right. And when she goes in there, she sees that her brother Paul is there and he's cured. It was George. George, yeah. of course, transferred the curse to himself <sighs> as a gesture of love for Marie. Right. And so, I guess. Go ahead. <laughs> So George knew how to transfer the curse himself. Well, he, he was with Marie every step of the way. I'm sure. Yeah, he I guess like, he picked up a few things. Naturally. Yeah. yeah. He was letting her do the spells and stuff, but like he knew he could have done them, yeah. but like it's her job to do that. And apparently, you can do it to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> so sure. Marie begs. Maybe you just had to lay down on the stone slabs. Right? Yeah. So Marie, like, begs the now transformed Georges to explain to her, like, why? Why did you do it? She's crying. And uh, Wendigo, Wendigo, and, well, we see, Wendigo, Wendigo. <laughs> we're forgivably only seeing the Wendigo's thought balloon or like ethereal concept of what he's thinking, uh -huh. which is you don't understand Marie and you never will. I didn't do this because I owed a debt. I did it because I loved you. And then he runs away, he smashes like a barrier between himself and the outside and then runs through uh, no. the Canadian wilderness. Nobody would do that. No. There's no person on earth who I, would fucking no, do I that. I know at least two people who would absolutely do that. <laughs> So George the Wendigo runs off, and I love it because like the Wendigo like runs off into the woods and passes Hulk and Wolverine. Hulk just sees the Wendigo, he's like, huh. Well, I guess the Wendigo's done with this book. <laughs> so then Hulk notices the sound of a woman crying. So he goes into the cave and he finds Paul just kind of getting his bearings, probably you know dealing with the horror of having eaten a man. Because <laughs> he'll never get over that. Because you'll yeah, never get over that. His friend having given up his life yep. to free him from the curse that right. he brought on himself so, by eating a guy. Yeah, well, he was just so hungry. It was four days. So This is horrific. I, I hate this. I know, it's terrible. Wait, no, the curse can be transferred. Yeah. So why don't they just transfer it back and forth? Like, right. you get uh, <laughs> yeah, we Mondays, just, Wednesdays, Fridays. <laughs> right. I get Tuesdays and Thursdays. Well, right. Then we alternate weekends. Huh? Hulk goes to Marie, who's crying, and Hulk like puts his arm around her and like, consoles Why? her. Why? Because Hulk is a empathetic being. What? Well, but she betrayed him before, I guess, because she's crying. Not, That's all it took. She's crying, a crying woman. Oh, she's crying. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, well, she probably feels bad. Now, I no, just wants to shut her up. Now, let's let's wrap this up with the last issue of the three right. appearances of Wolverine, oh. because Wolverine's only in like the first two pages. Right. But let's keep going. Okay. So, the helicopter comes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, the backup. Right, yeah, the GI Joe place said helicopter yeah. arrives, <laughs> and they're like, "Your six hours are over, Wolverine. Now it's our turn." And Wolverine's like, "No, please, I can still do it." Like he's gonna be like banished to another dimension or something. <laughs> And they're Wasn't like, he unconscious? Yeah, no, he wakes no, back he up, and then they're going to fight, and I'm like, all right, cool. But then he's like, no, come on. And I'm like, nope, you're six hours rough. Get the fuck in the car. We're no, going. No, this is going to ruin my perfect record. I never had a call in back So up. then they just drop a net, and Hulk's like, no, and he smashes the net, because the net's made of, like, metal or something. Uh -huh. so like, all right. So they if it was just regular rope, I feel like it would be harder to smash. It no, it would. Yeah, absolutely. Play. Yeah, yeah, no, Terrible that's why plan. they fucked up. So then they drop more dudes, and Hulk smashes the ground where they stand, and then they fire, like, a ballistics missile that only has, like, noxious gas in it uh. and it knocks out the Hulk because the Hulk is famously not immune to gas. <laughs> It's, it's still got to breathe. It's still got to breathe. That's how Batman right. beat the Hulk. Right. Also written by Len Wein. Right. If and it's how usually uh, the Invisible Woman beats him because yeah. she puts a bubble around his head and he can't breathe. So is, is it gas that like the gas goes into his lungs, yes. or is it gas that like displaces the air? No, no, no. So it it goes into his lungs okay. and then it just like fills his blood with like oh, you know, okay. a sedative. So that's a pretty easy to do. Uh, well, Hulk also has incredible lung capacity. So if the Hulk sees it coming, he uh, can hold his breath. Okay. Yeah, but like, if you just kept a bubble around his head for long well, enough, that's what she does. Wouldn't he die? Nah, because like the matter well, he passes out first. Gets, he, he passes out first. Yeah, no, it's when he's sedated that they like remove the bubble and then. You know, usually he comes to, and then they fight him again. Yeah, but then couldn't you keep the bubble around his head and kill Bruce Banner yeah, that way? You could, you, yeah. You absolutely. should be no. able to, because he can't be mad if he's unconscious. Yes. So he can't get madder as he's, he's unconscious. unconscious. Seems like a loophole. You know, the invisible woman could absolutely kill the Hulk. So <laughs> they put him in a cage, and they care. You know, they, they put him in a cage, and they affix the cage to the helicopter, and they fly away. Yeah. So while they're flying away, Hulk wakes up. Yep. Yeah. They're gonna take him back to the department. But uh, when Hulk wakes up, he like sees these moving, so he smashes the cage and he lands back in the wilderness. And uh, so he wanders oh, the woods. Oh, thank God. So, we're, so now we're in a new story where, where Hulk is wandering the woods and he runs into a character who may be problematic. Uh-oh. His name is Crackajack Jackson. And Crackajack <laughs> Jackson is a wise old black man 
who lives in the woods and he hasn't seen his son for a long time and what he wants to do is, is basically go back to find his son who's on the wrong side of the tracks and apologize for being a crappy dad and you know let him know that he loves him and he, he wants to help. That's Cracker Jack Jackson's motivation. Okay, for a second I thought they were capturing him and taking him to this wise man who could try and cure the Hulk. No, they're, they're, they're taking him to jail. <laughs> but uh, Hulk gets away. So when Hulk runs into Cracker Jack Jackson, who is sitting by the fire that he made eating beans, uh, Hulk is like, oh, great, another person, bye. And Cracker Jack Jackson is like, no, man, and I'm not going to give you an impression of Cracker Jack Jackson. That's probably like that's a good probably idea. Probably for the best. <laughs> but let's just say he's written phonetically. Yeah. And uh, so Cracker Jack Jackson is like, no, like living in the woods alone with a top hat is a lonely <laughs> business. So sit with me and we'll hang out. Because apparently he, being an out of work ringmaster, ringmaster or yeah. lion tamer is uh, lonely work. So Cracker Jack Jackson offers some beans to the Hulk. Also, Hulk it's the Hulk. Well, he doesn't know who the Hulk is. Nobody knows who the Hulk is for some reason. Hulk has like no PR. If no one knows who the Hulk is, when you see someone who is giant and green, yeah. Yeah. that well, is weird. Some He's wearing pants. Uh, so folks you know is folks, here. you know? Yeah. Some people just look a little different, look, that's all. Cracker Jack Jackson doesn't judge people based on the color of their skin. <laughs> so Hulk eats like all the beans. He loves beans, they're great. And so Cracker Jack Jackson and the Hulk enjoy their evening together. Uh, While well, not Cracker Jack Jackson, because now he's hungry, and now he has to eat a man and turn into a <laughs> Wendigo. The, the Wendigo plot is over, thankfully. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that would happen to him, because I, well, now they're in America. I don't think that the Wendigo curse happens in America. Wait, they're in America? Yeah, well, they're in New York. You know, they're like still in the area. Wait, oh, I, I thought, thought the was... Canadian government was after them. Yeah, they were, but they were, they were flying, and Hulk smashed the thing, and he. Yeah, the well, Canadian government was flying Cracker over Jack U.S. Jackson territory. Is not from is, Cracker Jack Jackson ain't Canadian. Interesting. But he might be in Canada. They're not! <laughs> but they're not in Canada, so we're just forgetting no, now it's like that the there's bayou. no reason that yeah. he would have been flying over America yes. at that time. Okay. Clandestinely, we bump into two characters who were on a chain gang together who, let's say, have differing opinions about society, <laughs> and the warden thought it'd be hilarious to chain them together because Johnny Anvil and Hammer Jackson are two individuals, Johnny Anvil and Hammer Jackson. And Johnny is a racist. And <laughs> Hammer is disaffected and angry at everybody. And so the warden was like, that's hilarious. I'll attach a white supremacist to a black man and make them work together. Lol. And so Jesus. when they escape, but they're, they're called still... Hammer and Anvil. Yeah, they, yeah. they work together. They don't work together. Well, they. Well, that is foreshadowing. It's a joke. Yes, it is foreshadowing because they're yeah. going to be villains. The only thing I want to know is what the fuck is that? That's a gulk. And gulks what? are an alien race. No, Hammer and Anvil what? are running away from a chain gang, or rather from from prison. But they right. were chained together and they were forced to work together. Right. But uh, oh, forced to work together. Oh, and overcome their differences. That's, that's, do -do 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 -do. Yes, that's what happens. <laughs> that's what this is. It is a racist odd couple. So Hammer and Anvil. I'm just gonna call them Hammer and Anvil from now on. They happen upon a. Another clandestine situation, which is that an alien crash lands near them. Now, this is the Marvel Universe. Jesus. There's no shortage of aliens. Right. But they and do invent one for this book. And it's <laughs> also not the Green Lantern story. No, it's not. Yeah, it, it, it kind of is. It's like a cracked mirror Green Lantern story. Because oh. this is a gulk. And this gulk is like, hey, help me. And so... In English? It, yeah, they all speak English. Okay. Uh, but... They've been studying our language or whatever. Exactly. Hammer stole a pistol on their jailbreak oh. and so he just shoots the alien <laughs> blows it away but it's an alien right and so the gulk basically says thank you planet dwellers for preventing my termination because the metal that you injected to me has been absorbed and will sustain my internal existence support systems <laughs> And they're like, and so, so they fed it. The white supremacist is like, wait, you mean those slugs saved your life? And he's like, indeed. And so I'll help you out. I see that you're chained together. You must like that. So then he uses his alien powers to then strengthen <laughs> the bond between them and gives them a different chain that is now imbued with alien forces and can do anything. And they're like, what the fuck are you doing, you stupid alien? I don't want to be chained to these assholes. What's wrong with you? Too late, I'm free. <laughs> You're yeah. welcome. Look, don't knock until you try it. See how strong it is. No, just unchain me. Nope. Just so let me go. These guys I'm try it out. You, you misunderstood. I don't want to be chained want together. To chain. Just undo but it. Have you seen the chain? It's way better. It's I, way better than the one you had before. I that's feel great. like you're not actually trying to help me. <laughs> if well, you were, you'd just do what I asked. Yeah, you fucking shot me, asshole. 
And while the lead may you have saved me, I know you were trying to kill me. Yeah, you yeah. Jerks. exactly. I was making yep. fun of I'm you. I'm smarter than you think. No, also the chain gives you cancer. <laughs> <laughs> so the two of them, like now they're, you know, that, before they were like yelling at each other because in the narration it is established that like one is a racist. <laughs> But now they're friends, and so they like they run at a tree, and they just down the tree, just cut it in half, just of cut this it in chain. half, and they're like, "This is awesome! This is totally worth it!" Does, oh, we can run back to prison and run through all the guards yeah. and cut them in half. Yeah, yeah. And Ugh. while they while they celebrate it, you could see them just take off in the back. That's so you know, fucking like, awesome! This is what's <laughs> up. I mean, I'm straight in here. <laughs> this is the book. This is the book. So. What what does the chain do to the tree? Does it turn into like a blade? Well, is no, it like it's, a? It's is it just like really a, hot? Oh, okay. It's hot, or it's like it, it it emits an energy because because it's dangerous. Right. So it's like a lightsaber or something. Sure. It it's it does lots of stuff that it absolutely shouldn't. Uh, the chain has many powers. <laughs> the chain has many powers. It does indeed. So uh, Hulk and Cracker Jack Jackson wake up from their slumber, and uh, Hulk asks if there are any more beans. Uh, Cracker Jack says there aren't. Uh, uh, you ate uh, them no, all. No, you ate all my beans. That's from and I went hungry. That, that's right. I don't know what I'm gonna do now. No, they go. They go into town and they get more beans. But uh, <laughs> with what money? It doesn't matter. You know, money that Cracker Jack. I don't know. It wow. Matter. So Cracker Jack. Oh, no, that's right. Spending his own money on yeah. Hulk. Jeez, this guy is very nice. Yeah. They're fishing. It's weird because like uh, so Cracker Jack says they're out of beans, but then they go uh, they go fishing to try to catch breakfast. Yeah. And uh, so. Crackerjack teaches Hulk how to fish, uh, and it's oh, kind of well, cute. Now a fish for a lifetime. Exactly. Then they make more beans, so it's like Crackerjack's a liar, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Crackerjack tries to teach Hulk to use forks. Hulk eats the fork. Lol. What? Yeah, you because know, he's like he's a stupid idiot. You know, he, he eats with his hands. But the Hulk just eats inedible shit. Is that a thing? He can. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, it's he's, not gonna hurt him. No, exactly. Uh, so that delights Crackerjack, and then. Uh, Crackerjack then teaches Hulk to write his own name because the Hulk can't read or write, I guess. Oh. What? Yeah, so Crackerjack teaches Hulk to write his own name, which delights the Hulk, and then the two of them have a great time. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Crackerjack, like, tries to go through a police blockade that's set up for, like, the the, the prison break that took place. Ah. And also, you know, the Hulk that's, like, on, on, on the loose. Right. So Hulk's hiding off in the, you know, in the woods over there. Uh, meanwhile, the uh, the police that are stationed at this roadblock are like, listen, Crackerjack, we can't let you through here right now. Right. And then Hulk's like, hey, how come you're not letting my friend go? And he smashes their car, and then the two of them just walk through because, you know, whatever. Right. And uh, so they end up at a prison. Damn back bacon. That's oh, right. wait, no. that's It's not Canadian. It's Is not it Canadian. Canadian. No, they're no. Americans now. Okay. So Crackerjack reveals to the Hulk right at the end of their quest that my son Leroy's in jail and he's done some wrong and I'm, ass I'm assuming you're going to want to abandon me now that you know that my son's a jailbird. And Hulk's <laughs> like, fuck that, man. No, I'm in. Like, and by the way, this is all paraphrasing. Hulk says really, really stupid shit. Yeah. So Hulk picks up Crackerjack, jumps him over the wild. Uh. Meanwhile... Oh, and then he lands and kills an yeah. inmate. No. Yeah. But it's an inmate, so it's fine. It's okay. On the inside of this prison... Hammer and whatever the fuck. <laughs> Anvil. Yeah. Anvil, yeah. Hammer and Anvil are tearing shit up with their alien shackles. Why would they go back they to the back prison? To fuck up these people who imprison them. Because wow. I guess now that they have this magical chain, they're unstoppable? That's right. They can't be shot. That's, that, that's what they think. They're like, I'm invincible now. So, <laughs> okay. that Gilk is like, <laughs> <laughs> So Hulk and Crackerjack arrive. They land right in the middle, right next to Hammer and Anvil. Is Cracker Jack just okay with this? Or is he like, what the hell are you doing? He's having a blast. I'm going to go to jail for the rest of my life because of you. He's totally fine. He's totally fine. Because he's 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 so motivated to see his son. Right. Who happens to, like, of course, be Hammer or Anvil or whatever the fuck. Oh, really? No. Of course. Uh, oh, come on. Yeah. And so uh, Cracker Jack's like, Leroy's son, I'm so sorry. And Hammer's like, no, man, fuck you, dad. Too late. Too late. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for this chain. I don't need a dad. <laughs> Crackerjack is begging Leroy to listen to reason. He accidentally touches the chain oh. and it kills him. <gasps> what? That's what? Right? He brushes the links. He just dies. We know he dies because his hat falls off. And so <laughs> it's like the Ark of the Covenant. Yes. You can't touch it. <laughs> right. Crackerjack literally just whoop. Just like, and Hulk like is like hit with the killing curse. So Hulk is pissed. <laughs> so Hulk attacks yeah. Hammer and Anvil. 
and he punches the white supremacist in the stomach, which I feel like would murder him. <laughs> no, but remember, he's, got that, magic but he's got that magic He's, he's got, got that, that chain. alien chain. It's not magic. Sorry, right. alien chain. Science alien. fiction. So, <laughs> oh. so thankfully, Leroy knows who the Hulk is. He's heard of him. Ah, someone so, finally has heard of him. But he's not swayed. He goes, well, let's prove how awesome we are. So then they attack Hulk. And, with their uh, chain. With their chain, yeah. And they're, they, they're so coordinated in their attacks. Why like, wouldn't the I Hulk mean, they just grab one of them and throw them and then whip the other one with him over the wall? Like, Hulk's a dummy. Yeah. But they, 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 they... I mean, he already punched one of them. The fight's over. <laughs> the guy's I'm fucking dead. Weight. dead. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like I'm chained to an anvil now. So... There we go. They like loop around him and burn him, and they like oh. throw him with their with their combined efforts. And then right. Hulk's like, "Fuck this! You tried to kill me. You killed Crackerjack." So he smashes the ground underneath them, and he grabs the chain between them, oh. but it burns his hands, and so he lets go. And then they crisscross over his oh. neck and try to choke him out. Ah, oh, crisscross applesauce. <laughs> so they they try to choke him out, and in the efforts of knocking the Hulk unconscious. Hulk then grabs the chain and overcomes the pain and, and, and severs it. Oh, shit. Yeah, so he splits the chain between Hammer and mm. Anvil, which drives them insane. Really? Yep. Because the chain links their minds or some shit? Whatever. Uh, is it no longer magical? No, it oh, wasn't sorry. magical. It's no longer alien technology? Sure. Oh, uh, it must have bonded to their central nervous system. I guess. It was just the pain was so great, it blew their minds. Oh, it hurt them? Yeah. Oh, so the chain was like part of their body. I think so. That, that is a weird it's, fucky detail. That is, yeah. So then Hulk <laughs> grabs Crackerjack's okay. body and he leaves and goes into the woods and he buries it. And then using his newfound ability of writing, he <laughs> makes a gravestone, misspelled of course. He just writes Hulk on it because he <laughs> knows his own name. <laughs> huh. Damn it! I can't believe Cracker Jack dies. I know. That's such bullshit. By accident, he's just like, son. Oh. That's a tragedy. It's no, like a I love tragedy. you all. It is. I'm so sorry. Yeah, it is. It's like Greek. Tra really, this is very deep. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's super yeah. deep. That's Wolverine, and also three Hulk books for the price of one. And that's what it was like to read the Hulk. Hulk goes on these fucking insane adventures <laughs> where he'll encounter. Cannibal Wendigos. monsters or alien-born racist monster guys. That Bizarre. that alien, that alien design is what the crazy. hell? I love him, and that's I, that's Len Wein running out of steam, be like, yeah. I don't know, and this. make his head yeah. real flat. You know what? I'm I'm going to X Men. <laughs> this is stupid. <laughs> you forgot uh, at the end of the book, the Wendigo book. Yeah. That the um, strain yes. of what happened to her drove uh, Marie Cartier into madness. Oh yeah, no, she goes insane too. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot it's about a that. Very common sort of thing. It is, yeah. In these books, Wait, I guess because so she's a woman, she couldn't handle. Will it. never no. forgive himself for eating somebody. Yeah, yeah. She goes insane. She goes right. insane. And George, the only good guy, is now cursed it, to be a Wendigo. George yeah. is the villain of the book, because George drives Marie insane. Yeah. Dooms Paul to a life of awareness yeah and also becomes himself a wendigo tormenting yeah. the canadian wilderness yeah so yeah no george is a piece of shit well but this is a book he doesn't mean to be <laughs> i know just... this is a book about the consequences of cannibalism that's true yeah it just it ruins more lives than you would realize exactly. it, it ruins See the more dominoes lives. falling just let yourself die cannibalism ruins more lives than it saves that's true oh that's true there you go yeah there you go. so there is Especially a lesson because it was learn. only four days and you could go for three <laughs> fucking weeks without food you fucking moron it's really hungry I'm sorry I just, I just felt like i was dying what if he'd gone two and a half weeks without food prior yeah yeah maybe yeah, maybe there was a oh, hunger strike damn i was fasting <laughs> What a time. I have a colonoscopy coming up. Oh, I guess I'll just eat this guy. No, I, I, I had a plan to eat afterwards, and then we got lost in the woods. Ah. Oh, well, I mean, he's dead already. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I mean, the meat's going to go bad. He's already been dead. 
Yeah. You know, I didn't kill him. He's not fresh. Yeah. What if we are here for three weeks? Right. And we didn't eat him when we had the chance. Yeah. And then I'll the be, meat two spoils. Weeks. Yeah. And then there's no option. Well, yeah. I mean, it's not right like now. it's a refrigerator out here. <laughs> He's gonna rot. Yeah. I don't know what time of year it is. That's yeah. Why they should have fed him to the wolves, but then you wouldn't have a Wendigo story. Yeah. You wouldn't have been able to introduce the Wendigo. What if he waited after four days because he's like, no. The guy died, and then rigor mortis set in. He'd be too tough. I gotta wait for the meat to tenderize. Sure. Over. <laughs> yeah. Look, all that matters is we're done, and we'll see you guys this next week so another episode. Oh, Sal. I mean, then. I have more Wendigo questions. <laughs> well, yeah, well, well never, we're, I don't think we're doing any more Wendigo ever again. <sighs> That's the is, last Wendigo you're ever gonna see. This is the end of the Wendigo. Wendigo. Thank God. I, I hate the Wendigo. Wendigo. He's Wendigo. cool looking, but like, you know, that's... Wendigo. Wendigo. And now we also know that the original Wendigo... Yeah. ...is not the original Wendigo. No. Oh, no, it's a different fucking no. guy. It was Paul, transferred to Georges. Is the Wendigo from that Spider-Man comic Georges? Maybe. I mean, seemingly, except that why would Wolverine be so concerned about that Wendigo dying in that Spider-Man comic if Wendigos can't die? <laughs> but, you know... Right. Uh, well, maybe they can die, and they were just wrong. They can be. Book. They can. They, they, <laughs> they can die if it is by the hand of a greedy Canadian hunter. Yeah. They can only be slain by Canadians. Right. Not by Wolverine's fucking claws. Oh wait, except Wolverine is also Canadian, so I guess. Ah, uh, but he's not greedy. That's true. That's he's true. only doing it for 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 duty. Because he's definitely yeah. a hunter. That's true. Maybe Wolverine intentionally missed every vital organ with his claws. Can we wreck on that? Sure. This book? Yeah. Absolutely. Like, oh, no, no, they could die. Wolverine just like felt bad for him, and so like went like in between like his lungs and stuff. Yeah, so yeah I, I know where to stab to not kill somebody. Yeah. I mean, if all you do it's is stab, stab, then you know how to stab. Yeah, I'm real good at it. Yeah. Even though I literally have three claws in each hand, so it's like even harder to like <laughs> miss a yeah. vital organ. Yeah. <sighs> if you would like to read this, it's in a Hulk epic collection that I'll make available in the comments down below. Uh, th there's a lot of these. Uh, hey, we could have done the one where Hulk fights Man-Thing, so I guess, you know. Is that what? worse? Better, I mean, worse? Wolverine is more popular. Right, right. You know, but yeah. uh, any questions about Wolverine? I mean, it seems like it's a pretty good uh, introduction. At to what character. point does he get rid of his cat whiskers? Yeah, uh, uh, almost immediately. Yeah. The next time you see him in Giant Size X Men, he has a different mask. <laughs> Stan looks at this book. He's like, "Why does he look so stupid? <laughs> Fix the mask." <laughs> Everything about him from the neck down works. I approve the character, <laughs> but then you put on these stupid whiskers. <laughs> Ugh. It's terrible. Why? You you got two stories here. One wolf. One cat. Pick a lane. <laughs> Uh, his oh, name is Wolverine. Boy. He's neither. I don't get it. Well, then drop the mask. And it's like, well, I don't want to show his face yet. Well, then we got two problems here. But uh, anyway, uh, we'll see you guys next time with another episode of Back Issue of Sal. Amen. Keep reading.